you so much for tuning in to P2P Relates, where we talk about all things relationships. I'm doing a series on business management and looking at the different ways to improve operations within your business. And one of those key principles is teaming. In today's economy, we have to be committed to being good team players. If we're not, we're not going to accomplish as much as we need to. So when interviewing candidates and when looking at appropriate additions to your team, you need to know that the person is committed to being a team player and that they have that skill set. If the team embraces the necessary growth challenges of the team, there is no limit to what that team can accomplish. We know that if you have individual contributors who are professional, well-trained, highly experienced, and hardworking, you're going to get a lot from them. But multiply that by five or six, and oh my goodness, these companies have accomplished phenomenal feats because they not only had brilliant and sharp and hardworking contributors, but they had teams of people who came up with ideals that are amazing and hadn't been thought of or done before. Even in this pandemic, it was critical that businesses thought outside the box and said, hey, this is how we usually did it. This is how we've always done it. And that's not going to work. So let's go and recreate a new reality. Those are the companies that are thriving today. For years, I've used Tuckman's model and I appreciate his model because it's so measurable, provable, usable. So I'll run through that really quickly. For many of you, you probably already know it and have heard it, but it works. Forming, storming, norming, performing profound forming. When you're getting a team together, there are all types of things you need to establish. Ground rules, purpose of the team, desired end results, resolution for conflicts, communication tactics, whatever it is, your team will figure it out. You're in the forming stage. So there's going to be roles and responsibilities, expectations of the team and the team player. All those things are established during the forming stage of your team. Forming. When you're getting a team together, there are all types of things you need to establish. Ground rules. Purpose of the team. Desired end results. Resolution for conflicts. Communication tactics. Whatever it is, your team will figure it out. Especially if you're tailoring it to what the team is coming together for. Those things need to be discussed as well. But you're in the forming stage, so there's going to be roles and responsibilities, expectations of the team and the team player. All those things are established during the forming stage of your team's development. Phase two is storming. Oh my goodness. So we've elected who is the secretary or the scriber, who the leader is, and maybe the co-leader, event planning, or whatever those roles are within that team. And then before you know it, I don't like your leadership style, or you didn't deliver when we needed it done. You said you would do this, but you didn't. We don't know each other that well yet. We have not grown and matured as a team. So the issue of trust enters into that situation. And before you know it, oh, there's so much chaos that you really almost consider disbanding the team or leaving the team and assuming that it's just not going to work. Phase three, we finally normalize. We figure out who's going to be late, who is laid back, but they still get it done. We just learn each other. We figure out what works, what doesn't work. We even relax the rules to some degree to more customize and fit the personalities on the team. And we get it done and we know how that works. And we just kind of like have our flow. We have our rhythm and then performing until those first three phases have been dealt with 
and we come through those phases, we can't get to the performing stage where we get an outcome, we get a deadline, we get a process together, and then we put it out there. And that is the sweet deal. The unfortunate reality though is, as soon as a new member enters the team or an old member exits the team, those stages start all over again. I don't care how mature the team has become, how in sync you are, one person leaving, one person coming in, either or or both, will catapult that team back to stage one forming because inclusion is critical making sure that everyone is accounted for. So understand that going forward, when you've got a team, you've got these challenges, you've got these problems, don't think that you failed. Don't think that it's not possible. Don't think that this is just a bad idea, but just realize that there are stages the team has to go through in order to develop well. And once you figure it out, oh my goodness, the sky is the only limit. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.